play an evening of uh, blues songs tonight I thought that would be that's a uh, old very old-fashioned and I think uh, blue uh, just to say something ab about about it before we start and I was thinking uh, I heard Max Roach a drummer one time say talk about jazz he said if it hadn't been for slavery we never would have had this music mm -hmm. and it, it's certainly uh, true of more maybe even more true of uh, blues and it's uh, and I think when, I th when I'm thinking blues, everybody probably has their own story of what it is and where it came from and all that. But it's, uh, uh, I think it it's, you might say it pre preceded jazz and it had its roots in uh, the sound of uh, field hollows and uh, church music and in also in uh, African uh, drumming. And uh, another thing I thought to say about it is uh, that uh, it has this phrasing uh, where there's often one phrase and then a repeated phrase, and then uh, and then an answering phrase. So that it, uh, and I think, well, how did how come that all got started? And I think it all got started because um, you'd say something and then you'd say it again while you're trying to think what else you're going to say, and then you'd, the third thing where you finally come up with something that. Uh, and I think that's uh, that's largely true, and so that wound up I think structuring. Uh, blues, and I, I think with piano, uh, you know, there was I think blues piano wasn't really a blues instrument for a long time, but it became. Hey, can you find a place to be? You know, there's some folding chairs too that are. I didn't unfold, that we could unfold those chairs. And uh, lately, uh, I'm going to hope my colleagues Tim Gilmore and Peter Cancilia will uh, chip in and help me out to talk about these things because everybody's got their own uh, feelings about about them. I think um, uh, blues became uh, like you had like a classical form of minuet. Like if you have a, like it used to be a dance that, that you would do and it's in three, four time. And then it became sort of an artistic uh, thing where people would make a, 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 an, art, an art song out of, out of it. And tangos like that too, where people in uh, Argentine, uh, Spanish tangos uh, were practical, uh, fun things to do, and then they became uh, art songs. And so I think blues have gone that way. I don't know, before I go on, uh, I thought we'd play, maybe we'll play another song and then maybe I'll let you guys, if you want to say, do you want to, do you have something yeah, to you? Uh, thank you. Why don't you show them what the root template of the blues of the 12 bar blues is? The root? Just harmonically, what is, what is built on. Okay, I can do that. If uh, and with, with the song we were going to play is a boogie woogie, and it's a good uh, it's a good uh, way to do it. So it's like you start on the f one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
eight notes in a scale and you start on the first one. Then you go up four steps. Then you go back to the, where you came from. Then you go up to the fifth, the strongest tone in the whole row. And back down where you came from. So you have that answering thing again. Uh, like I uh, said for you yesterday and here you come today. And you repeat. I said for you yesterday, here you come today. It's some answer. You got your mouth open, but you ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> so the blues often, that's the really the simplest way I think you can you can do it, but it, uh, it invites uh, complication and, uh, I don't know, uh, sophistication and original treatment, uh, which is kind of a wonderful, a wonderful thing. And you think, uh, and right away that began to happen. I think when people, when the Great Migration happened uh, and people started leaving the South and going to the uh, manufacturing towns in the North, then the uh, Blues got more organized, and I think these people they had you couldn't just change the chord whenever you wanted to, you had to coordinate with two other people at least, and they were all going to be amplified, and so you better get it right. Well, let's, let's agree, you know, well, and after eight measures, we're going to go to the five chord or whatever it is. And often you didn't have to say that, people would just hear that and, and, and do it, but it, it got that, that structure that, that I just talked about. That might not have been a structure that was used in 1905 or in 1890. They it might have been just, uh, you just play uh, until you run out of an idea, then you change. <laughs> and the, I think a lot of old, the older records, like the Lightning Hopkins is somebody that plays like that. And John Lee Hooker has, has a really more, a very, they just change whenever they want to, like Ornette Coleman. <laughs> just well, uh, related more to vocal blues. They were like balladeers because they were right. telling stories, and depending on how long the story would last, it didn't always conform into a phrase. It was uh, the instrumentalists that started to really formalize the structure. I think that's really true. I think the blues has always been a vocal, a vocal music to tell a tell a story, and when the instrumentalists get involved, it goes another <laughs> it goes another way. So what Sonny just played a second ago, everything we're going to play tonight in some way is going to relate to that basic structure. But we're going to try to disguise it and fool you with lots of twists and turns with it. It's still in there if you peel through the layers. Uh, yeah, there was the blues, and then there was the bebop blues, and then there was the progressive blues, and then there was Sonny's blues. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so we're, we're going to just play for fun. We're going to do uh, some boogie woogie, uh, boog a boogie woogie uh, number. And I, I think a thing about uh, boogie woogie that uh, I learned it from a friend when I was like eight years old. And I think a lot of people learned uh, learn boogie woogie that way, like in an apartment or, and somebody's. It's it's, just, it's simple enough. You can show somebody in ten minutes how it how it goes. And but then um, you can. So then the left hand is the big strong thing. Here's the pattern, and you do it every on piano. You do that every time. But the right hand ad, admits of really of amazing complications. It's the kind of thing you can do, uh, like independence. One hand is doing one thing, and the other hand is doing many other different things. And then it has, uh, so we're going to do that boogie woogie. Will we uh, maybe dovetail us into your first blues? Okay, just without stopping, you think? Yeah, no, I think we might have to stop. <laughs> Ready?
that's uh, it's just still fun. What a great uh, idiom, you know, to to play. <laughs> so we didn't go right into the next song. I don't know. That, uh, I guess the one of the earliest songs I so blues. I guess you have to say like the little quote I sent around by uh, Ralph Ellison. It's uh, it keeps uh, it some. Uh, it doesn't get rid of your problems when you sing about the blues, but it uh, um, rather it cherishes them. And somehow mysteriously uh, makes things uh, through this kind of comedy, tragedy, uh, lyrical stuff uh, makes everything okay for makes everything uh, bearable. And and in a way, uh, all the in my in my own way, um, uh, I, I want to do that on all the all the songs um, that I that came up with. And this uh, one of the first ones is uh, called "The Blues for My Father," and uh, which was I uh, wrote when I was around twenty and. Uh, he was he said he got sick and uh, had a stroke and and I I was getting into this blues stuff at that time and uh, I was influenced at, at the same time also by uh, the uh, Coltrane playing so that stuff come it, it comes out of that this blues comes out of that background and uh, we'll do it now all right.
was he, di different, different than the regular blues. They even had a, a minor feeling. It was, uh, which I don't think any of the old blues singers ever did that. I think it was, that's all, that's a more 40s, 50s, maybe. I hadn't really thought about that. But it's, uh, it goes really nicely. Yeah. So we're going to play uh, another uh, one of that early period around the same time I wrote the other song. It's um, uh, called Maxine's Eyes. And you wouldn't, if I didn't, if we didn't say this is a blues, I don't, maybe nobody would pick that up. But it has a 12 bar structure in it. It's, uh, I think you know, now that I'm saying it, everybody will say, oh, yeah. yeah.
Peter Castillo playing the bass. Thank you, Peter. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's always liked that song, so I'm always great. Uh, and Tim Gilmore is playing the drums, helping us out, and generally speaking. <laughs> and uh, I guess the next one is, uh, requires a little explanation, too. It's called Blues in the Studio. And it's, uh, it's, I guess it, it's more, it has a, uh, inspired us by this guy I took lessons from, Dennis Sandoli. And when his uh, first lessons, he, uh, he off, often gave this theme as, as a first lesson. It's, it's, I'll play it. Play it. Has this feeling like it's a minor key, but it's got that sound in it, and he called that the Neapolitan, and it's like a, it's a minor blues with a flat of second, and and because of this, as I my thinking is always was playing blues records all the times, and to get more interested in uh, expanding uh, musical horizons, and uh, this tune. Uh, came out of that of trying to put this more sophisticated um, stuff t together into a blues form so I can make some sense of it. And it's, um, um, and you'll hear it as it goes by. There's different time, some parts in three, one, two, three, four, and some of it's one, two, three, one, two, three, and some of it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> so it's, uh, but uh, we hope it makes sense. <laughs> it all adds up to something. <laughs> <laughs>
They got a more uh, more recently written tune that's um, for this guy that's uh, that's become a friend of mine who's a, a prisoner and he's um, he's in Ohio and he's on on death row and he uh, didn't do any of the things he's accused of doing and lately he's had an extension of his um, he was due to be executed in a month but he's uh, they've given him a stay of execution they've put it back three years. And this guy's name is Keith Lamar, and it's uh, it's worth trying to remember the name and looking it up because if you look up his name on the, on on a website or on the computer, there's a lot of great information. And he's a terrific uh, character, and it's it was his love of music that uh, attracted a lot of attention. And he's he's got a guy that's helping him out, and he he does these uh, concerts where he's written poetry, and he does uh, he broadcasts from. Uh, his prison cell with uh, fantastic musicians and they've had concerts all over the world and, and it's through music that uh, that's all happened and he says music is the bridge and he's getting along with he's from somebody in, on death row he's made friends with remarkable uh, people all over the world and it's uh, you just hope that uh, it'll all have a happy ending you know and he said he's, he's grateful that there's more more time he has more time but he's also it's more time yeah, you know, so it's uh, so I I just in in the spirit of uh, you know trying to contribute and participate, I wrote this song called he and he's called Keith is he calls himself Bomani, so it's uh, this is called Blues for Bomani. Let's
uh, 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 I guess uh, maybe everybody has the same thought that uh, blues are often say blues for something, blues for uh, you know somebody's name, or blues, and it, it, it helps focus our attention and call uh, to mind all the things we want to be thinking about that person or our feelings about that person. <laughs> So this music and uh, and then these things get played a lot. And you see, you have to think, you can think back about your own uh, feelings about uh, what you played before and how the songs came out. And we got uh, and we got a couple more of this set, and we'll take a break. We're gonna do um, one. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny. This is um, not uh, not written for anybody. It's called Solitude. Uh, uh, just a pun on my name, and uh, S A U L Solitude. <laughs> and it's uh, and it's a little bit of it's a no like a novelty blues in a way. And, uh, we'll we're gonna play solitude. Set.
We got one more tune uh, that uh, comes out of the uh, in East uh, Indian tradition. Uh, uh, of, uh, of, um, I don't know, I guess it's called the uh, Kundalini Yoga, the Sare Sasa. That, that, that has to do with primal sounds. That, that in that uh, in that tradition, they, there's a thought that there's just like there's uh, sounds that existed uh, initially before uh, matter. And uh, that's, that's a wonderful thought. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, it's called Sare Sasa. And Sare Sasa is often one of the ones from I've understand. I'm not really an expert on this, but I've heard, I've heard this that uh, when they do uh, yoga uh, stuff, they often do Sare Sasa first as a chant. And uh, oh. it gets everything else going. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs>
So, yeah, no, it was, uh, uh, we're going to take a break and uh, thanks for uh, hanging out and uh, listening and pl helping us play the blues <laughs> in our own ways. Uh, we're about to start in again, interrupt your lovely time. <laughs> and play uh, a composition from, when is it? From 1978, called Solidarity, which is another joke about my name. But uh, uh, it, uh, you can hear the blues form in this. It's a, one of, it's a 12 measure song. And uh, well, you, we'll try to take it wherever it goes. You want it to let you go. Yeah, green light. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> Save, save that one. That was good. Nice. That's I was our fastest one. That's uh, it's nice to try to play fast every now and then. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna go for another uh, unusual. But I'll bet you can hear the blues in this one too. Has a lot of complications. Let's see what some of them are, just for the fun of it. It starts in four four time, the first section, and then the part where usually we go to the four fourth chord four chords away it's in 11 four and then it goes back to four four then it goes back to 11 again and it ends in nine and it sounds like like uh, directions for calling uh, a foreign country <laughs> yeah so uh we'll see how we deal with it but i i think it it again like i said before i, I hope all this stuff works you know part, some of the things came uh, away when uh just thinking, uh, I have a, a son that plays drums, and he calls 4-4 uh, time uh, patriotic music. Yeah. And, and so it's just that's what Americans play, 4-4. Four, four. But it's, but it's uh, <laughs> there's something to that. So it's like, let's try to expand uh, our, what we can do.
Yeah. I forgot to say the name of that song was uh, DNT. DNT, and it sounds like TNT, but it's DNT. And it was a friend, a friend who played the drums, and his license plate was DNT. I said, "Here comes DNT." So that's what I. That's, that's where the title came from. And we've got a couple more to do. Like we're going to play um, another one of these blues four things. Blues four had a a young friend uh, who died way too early, and he was just in his young twenties. And he um, so he just you know what he did wrote a song to help remember him and <coughs> Jamie Cans and some of you maybe have heard his name. And, uh, let's see if I can find my composition and yeah like the feature of the bass player on this one just to warn him
got another uh, two more songs one uh, the ne next one is another blues for somebody and it's uh, and it's another person that everybody should know about just like Keith Lamar but he's not well well known uh, maybe somebody's from David Schnitter and he's uh this is probably about my age and he, he uh, I heard him when I was like 19 or 18 and I, I thought this is the best player I've ever heard and I played tenor saxophone and um, clarinet a little bit and did singing and it was uh, hilarious there's almost as much as a comedian, and uh, his uh, he went and played with uh, Art Blakey for, for for five years, so he got uh, well known as and and that and then, uh, but as often happens with uh, American great players, there's no place to play, and he wound up going to living in Spain for a, a long time, and then came back and lives in New York City and teaches there and still, and uh, so I wrote this song called Blues for Dave. And I was thinking maybe Dave would play it once, but yeah, I don't think he ever has. <laughs> uh, 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 maybe now. <laughs> Blues for Dave. That's a, let's see if I can get my chart in case. Okay. Yeah, one chorus on piano.
<laughs> All right. Man, thanks. Thanks, everybody. And we're going to do a, a going home blues, uh, in the old, more in the old-fashioned style that we kind of started out with. I, I used to uh, live in a place called Buck Lane in Haverford, Pennsylvania, and this is called uh, Buck Lane Blues. It comes from like the time of, uh, I don't know if people go through these things now, I like, like listen to Elmore James like all day long. And, uh, and uh, all these uh, blues singers like, like that. I don't know if anybody does that anymore. <laughs> it's a show, admission I shouldn't make in public, uh, but uh, but uh, this tune comes out of uh, that. So yeah, Buckling Blues, and I hope we can play it our, our own way a little bit. All right, ready? Don, two, three, four. <laughs>
<laughs> all right, good, good. That's the right idea. Yeah. Oh, thanks everybody. That's uh, that's, that's our blue show for the evening. <laughs> we really appreciate uh, everybody's uh, digging it with us, and it's really helpful to have the, as always, have the audience contributing uh, immeasurably and, and happily. So thank you. One more. I don't know if we I don't know if we have one more. <laughs> We There's can. only 5,000 blues in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would, would you like to want to play another one? Or? Play another how do you want to play? Um... No more blues. <laughs> no more blues. Yeah. Or no more blues. Or no more blues. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a milestone called no, no, more, no blues? How about uh, now's the time? Is that all right? F? That's a blues and and a blues by Charlie Parker, uh, in the classic style. Sorry, Peter. Sorry. All right, thanks, Susan. <laughs> 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 Peter, and once again, I want to thank uh, WCTV, Woodstock Community TV, is, who's just uh, graciously uh, records us, and you can catch it in a couple weeks on on YouTube if you if you hadn't already had enough. <laughs> but I'm really grateful, and it's it's helpful to look back and enjoy it again, or see what we can do better. Just always a joy to come. Uh, all right. Did you, uh,
<laughs> yeah, melodica. Par melodica. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with that. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, Get for asking for another Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, be careful what you wish for. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, thank